Frank Gehry is a famous American architect. He was born in Ontario, Canada in 1929. When he was growing up, he spent weekend afternoons with his grandma. She brought home scraps from Frank's grandpa's hardware store. Together, he and his grandma would build wooden cities together. So his grandpa was at work at the hardware store he owned, and his grandma would take care of him uh, while his parents were working, too. And so uh, she would bring home wooden scraps from the hardware store, and he and her would build together. So I, this is not an actual picture of Frank Geary. Eventually, he, Frank Geary, got big enough that he could hang out at the hardware store, and he would collect scrap materials and continue to build with common hardware. And he started to build forts and things in the backyard. Again, this isn't an actual picture of Frank Gehry. Frank's dad thought he was wasting time with art and building. Frank's dad uh, wanted him to do something else. His mom, though, kept introducing him to more and more fine art and artists. So his, ma his dad wants him to get a job and to be practical, and his mom shows him art and, and introduces him to as many artists as she can find. In 1947, his family emigrated to the United States. He took a job as a delivery truck driver and attended night school at L.A. City College. So they lived in Los Angeles, and um, he started going to college. Again, not an actual picture, but this is the job that he was doing, driving a delivery truck. He graduated from the University of Southern California, USC's School of Architecture. After college, he joined the Army and eventually ended up in a city planner education program at Harvard. Frank said it was experiences building with his grandparents that always brought him back to architecture. That's why I put in the slides about him growing up and spending time at the hardware store and building with his grandma and then building forts because he said that's what actually made him so interested in designing buildings. In 1957, Frank Gehry was 28 years old while working for Gruen and Associates. You might recognize that because it is the same architecture firm that hired Norma Sklarik as vice president nine years later. So they both worked for Gruen. Uh, Frank Geary got his first solo commission, which means uh, someone who wanted something hired him to design it. So he designed a cabin for this guy, and the cabin is now called the David Cabin. And I wrote a little note on this slide and said, this looks a lot like many other cabins that I've seen. But then I started thinking about it, and most of those cabins were built after 1957, and I realized why so many cabins look similar is that many of them borrow ideas um, from Frank Gehry's original design. So let's look at some things that a lot of cabins have. A lot of cabins have big windows that look out wherever over wherever they are, whether it's a lake or uh, mountains. A lot of cabins also have a big fireplace on that wall with the windows, and a lot of cabins have a deck that also is... Um, on that same side that faces whatever they're designed to look at. In 1961, after being in California for a long time, Frank Gehry moved to Paris to study with a famous French architect. Then he came back to L.A. and started his own architecture firm called Gehry & Associates. He, uh, he bought a house in Santa Monica, California. This is not what the house looked like when he bought it. This is what he did to it. You can kind of see the house in the background. But he added this wall and these different things and the fence. And you'll see some other things that he added in the next few slides. In 1978, Geary finished the house. But many people thought he was still working it 
working on it because it had fence and stainless steel parts and kind of crooked things and plywood on the outside. So if you look carefully, this is uh, the kitchen that he designed. This is an addition onto the house. And look at some of the things. Look at how you can see the wood. I see light bulbs hanging directly from the ceiling. They're not uh, covered up by any other lights. And then there's a giant window part of the ceiling. So most of the ceiling is just this giant window. And it's designed to bring a lot of light into the kitchen. You can also see the fencing in the background. And I don't know if you noticed, but look at how crooked that one window is on the back wall of the kitchen. He and his wife raised their two sons in this house, and they finally just moved out in 2018, when Frank Gehry was 89 years old. So he lived in this house uh, for a long time and only moved out when he was 89. This is the same house from the slide before, the one in Santa Monica. For 40 years, his family all lived there. And because it was on a busy corner, people were always stopping by and taking pictures of the Frank Gehry house. So Frank Gehry did have a wall put up around it so that people couldn't walk right up to the house. In 1981, he designed this museum in San Pedro, California. And you can start to see, well, you can see a couple things. You can see things he borrowed from his house, like the slanty lines over kind of the entrance and the fencing. And then you can also see he's starting to build with curbs. He designed this house in 1984 for the Norton family, also in Santa Monica, uh, or near Santa Monica in Venice. And I want you to think, what do you think about it? Do you like the design? Many people have strong opinions about this house and others of Frank Gehry's houses. Um, why do you think people would like it or hate it? One thing that I noticed about this house is it was kind of designed to look like a boat. You may have seen barges that kind of look like this down on the Mississippi River. That was on purpose. Frank Gehry kind of wanted it to feel like a boat because it's so near the water and the lot was so skinny that, he's, that he kind of thought about building up and down and back. So it kind of looks like a boat that way too. Frank Gehry got more and more bold with his buildings. And this is where he starts kind of the curvy part and the next wave of his designs. This is uh, in Minneapolis. It's the Wiseman Art Museum. And it's at the University of Minnesota. It was designed in 1993. It also sits right on the Mississippi River. And uh, when people, when it was first built, people had strong opinions of it. What do you think of it? Do you like this design? He did win uh, many awards for this. Mr. Mark's mom, when she, when she first saw this and she knew I was going to be an art teacher, she called me and said, have you seen that new tin can museum at the University of Minnesota? She didn't like the design. She thought it was too flashy and too curvy. Would you like to live in a house like this that had this many curves to it and was silver? It's made from stainless steel. Mr. Mork's favorite uh, Geary building is this one in Prague from 1996. People call this Fred and Ginger. Does anyone know the significance of that? Who were Fred and Ginger? Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers' picture is there next to these buildings. And Frank Gehry borrowed ideas about two people dancing. You can tell... There's uh, the one building kind of looks like it might have the bottom that's a dress. And the buildings kind of lean into each other and um, are skinnier at the bottom, kind of where the feet and legs would be. 
Many people consider the Bilbao Art Museum the greatest building of the 21st century. And it has changed the city of um, Bilbao, Spain. The whole end of the city that's around the art museum now is a very, very busy place. And people call um, this the Bilbo effect. The idea that if you build a significant piece of architecture, that it will change the city around it. Uh, do you see the giant spider out front? Why do you think... Some people think this is the greatest building ever built. Gary also designed the Disney Concert Hall in downtown Los Angeles. Here's the inside. What do you think the outside looks like? So the inside looks pretty familiar. Looks like a concert hall. Looks like where you would go to listen to a concert. This is the outside. One of the things that Frank Gehry wanted was to make it so that it wasn't just the people inside the concert hall that got to experience the music. He said he remembered when his family was too poor to go to concerts, and he would walk past concert venues and feel jealous that he couldn't experience the music. So, Frank Gehry did two things. He put big speakers on the outside of the building so that people walking by can hear the music that's playing inside. And he made visual displays so that the, the visual displays change with the music that's playing inside. So the, so the building changes depending on what type of music is playing and as the songs go on. Like most... Of his other buildings, many people love it, and some people really hate it because it's so curvy and weird and uh, it's lit up at night. Thank you for uh, watching this. Please make sure that you use this uh, information before you take the quiz.